Greg, come on now. Where does an idea like this emerge? What are you doing that you say, you know, I must do a show about a pandemic during a pandemic? I mean, where did you get the idea? I'm sitting in my house like everybody else on lockdown trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do with my time. That's pretty much it. But, uh, you know, I, I'd had an idea kicking around my head about, in, in my head about somebody that was uh, released from prison after a long uh, kind of unjust uh a drug crime sentence and a maximum, you know, minimum, maximum, whatever it is called sentence. And, and then I thought, well, gosh, you know, this is the time to do it. You know, that, that I, I started reading about people getting out early uh, of prison because of the virus. And I thought, well, gosh, you know, let me take that little bit of an idea and turn it into something else. And next, before I knew it, I had a script written and I was sending it around town. And hey, perfect timing, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it. You know, it was interesting because it was very early in in everything, and I think there was a hesitancy too of being like, "Well, we don't know where this goes. Are we doing a pandemic comedy?" And and then I think in discussions, people realized I wasn't doing a comedy that was going to lean heavy into. It's not like we're the oh, look how funny COVID is. I mean, nobody was thinking that by any means. I, I'd had. I'd had people that I knew early on that 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 passed away from this, and and even still today, I'm finding out tragic news, and so that was not ever the intention to make light of anything. It's just the inciting incident that starts our character's journey, and then it is it, it's a backdrop to the show. It's going on, but it's it's we we try not to hit it hit it too much. In fact, at one point, we had to go through and be like, we need to put a little more COVID in this because we don't want to ignore it either. You know, I was surprised that. There were things that we were doing in the beginning that I had totally forgotten about. Yeah, that's kind of by design as well, right? So we set this early, early in, in the pandemic when we're naive, that people don't know what's, you know, do I touch this? Can I touch it? We have a scene that there's guy sitting there and he doesn't have a mask, so he's got a scuba thing on, you know, he's standing outside, you know? So hopefully we can look back on that. People didn't know, do we wear masks? Do we not wear masks? Hopefully we can look it back at that time and the show probably only takes place in about three weeks. So, so it's a time that's early and we were naive and hopefully, Oh, we did do that. Or yeah, that was silly. Or this was, Oh, we did learn later. We could do, you know, whatever. So uh, yeah, it doesn't get deep into the pandemic when it's like, Ugh, I loved when uh, Martha would just put her hand over her mouth. Like that was safe. <laughs> yeah, like that was doing months. something like that was doing, like, Oh, Oh, whoop. I forgot my mask. Let me, yeah. This yeah. Is, this is as good as a mask, right? It, it works. Right. <laughs> and some How of that stuff we would just find on set. Yeah. How did you happen to think of Garrett and, and Martha? Was it, Oh, we've got to get back together or is this. No, I wrote this for Garrett from the beginning. I've been trying to, I I'm always trying to work with Garrett. Uh, he just, he's a good friend and an and, and amazing actor and such a amazing presence on set that, um, that that this was from the beginning, I, I wrote it for Garrett. Martha was under contract with somebody else, so she wasn't even available at the time. Um, and so Garrett Garrett was aboard immediately and he's the executive producer on this. And and then it was later, it was, it was we were shooting the first week and we had a uh, casting change um, at the role of Barb and, uh, and we called Martha and she was in London and we said, can you get here in three days and maybe start shooting if we can figure it out? Uh, and she said, Absolutely. Did and, it feel, uh, did it so feel yeah, comfortable? Were you, like, were you back in your old groove with these people or was it a new groove? I'd say we're kind of back in our old, I mean, the groove never stopped. I mean, we, we, we've been friends for a while and they've done shows. I've, I've, Garrett, I did the, 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 the show, the guest book with, he was in season one and, and Martha came in and did an episode of that. And I mean, it wasn't long before, we called Martha, we were shooting in, in Pittsburgh that we were all in my backyard, social distancing uh, and hanging out. So, I mean, we've never lost contact or our friendships have remained intact and we're very close. So I think it's just jumping right back in to where we've always been with each other. And, and the chemistry those two have on set is it's infectious. It's amazing. If you're a fan of television too, you see these faces that you go, oh my God, look who's there. Susan Rutan, you've got in there, you've got Fred yeah. Grandy in there. Is that just the fanboy in you that comes out or what is that? No, that's just watching people audition and picking the absolute best actor for the role. I I'll be honest with you. I I've watched so much Love Boat in my life uh, as a kid. That that I mean, Love Boat was just like, oh my God, Love Boat's on. I was so excited. That was, you know, that meant a babysitter was coming over. I was going to get to break the rules and I was going to get to also watch Love Boat and then maybe Fantasy Island. But sometimes that scared me a little bit. 
But um, but I, I cast Fred. Uh, I, you know, you, you see these things and you watch and go, oh, that, I'm like, that guy's hilarious. You know, cast him. It wasn't until the next day I realized it was Gopher from the Love Boat. I, I, did, I didn't even realize it. So it's like, so I don't know. I don't know if he takes that as a compliment or, or an insult because it's like, no, his performance is what it had nothing to do with 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 anything else. And um, so, no, that's just the best people for the job. And we got lucky that they were actually people that 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 maybe people will see and, and be happy to, to see on TV. And you found somebody who I think is very talented, but you probably wouldn't hire him under other circumstances. And that's your son, Camden. He does such great videos on uh, on social media. And I thought, thankfully, somebody is saying he should have work, but then it turns out to be dad. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I Camden has been in a, a, a lot of my shows over the time. And, and from a very young age, he, he showed a passion and, and a talent for acting. And uh, and he went to uh, Boston University. Uh, he got a theater degree there and uh, graduated right in the middle of the pandemic. And then his first job actually was on um, uh, out of college was on Station 19. Uh, and he played uh, he played a, a drag queen on there with a bunch of other people and he got blow up in a fire and it was all very good. And and then when I was writing this show, uh, you know, I, I didn't I didn't cast Camden because he's my son. I wrote this part because he's my son, because I think he's extremely funny and talented and uh, and I wanted him in the show. Uh, so. So, yeah. And he, and he delivered. And of course, I put him on tape first and sent him to the studio and network. I'm not just calling somebody and saying, oh, I'm putting my son in this. I want him to see, you know, that that he can deliver. And and I thought he did it. I thought he did an amazing job. I did too. And just know I'm a big fan. So when you get him going, just say you had him win. <laughs> yeah. Well hopefully he remembers, right? Right. Right. He will yeah. he won't forget that. I don't think so. I hope not. We'll He'll see. have to push push you around in the uh wheelchair at some point. So <laughs> yes, old, right? Right? Remember when I gave you a job? That yeah. Time. How is the writing process for you? Because you do have such a unique style. It's so loopy, if you will, that I don't know how you come back to it. You must have to just sit and just write a whole episode at once. That's usually what I do. I mean, usually what I'll do is I'll I'll let something uh, ruminate in my mind for a while, right? And I'll just have an idea and I'll go for a bike ride or a walk or I'm driving and I always have my phone with me and I talk into it, give myself notes. And then I'll go back and I'll start writing things down. And what's the world, what's the characters and most importantly, what's the story. Um, and I'm always usually thinking about stories in a dramatic way. Uh, I'm never thinking like, Oh, what's going to be funny about this? Like what's the situation I'm getting in this funny. It's not the way I think at least not anymore. I'm thinking about like any, any show that I've done in the last, I don't know how many years, if you just say the premise, you'll be like, is it a, drama or comedy because it could be a drama as well and I think that's good for storytelling and then yeah when I'm ready when I feel like I have enough fuel for the fire and I sit down I'll I'll write I'll write the script in one day sometimes it's terrible but I'll write it from start to finish in one day then I'll go back and mess with it then I give it to my friends that that are writers that have worked with me forever and 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 they they certainly help out with like oh this could be funny add this in here you know whatever but uh, so then it becomes a collaborative process after that. Does streaming give you the ability to do things that you didn't do before in network or are do you oh, hold so much yourself, more? So do you hold more. yourself back though and say oh I shouldn't do that? No, I no. mean I love it. I, I mean look I, I don't do anything. Like this show isn't like a hard R or anything like that. I mean, yeah, they they curse from time to time. There's certain words that they will not say that that, you know, it's no different than I think when I was on TBS, what the rules were basically about like and not not necessarily rules, but like, all right. I mean, you want it to feel different than network. It's it's a little bit elevated. Um, as far as like the humor you could do and pushing the envelope. But at the same time, I don't want people like turning the TV off because like, I don't want to watch this with my 14 year old. You know, there's things there that for me, everybody has different rules in their house. There's, for me, it's like a 13, 14 year old at my house, given what they already know and whatever, I'd be fine with them watching this show, you know? And, and but if I push the envelope too much, then I'm uncomfortable watching it with my kid. And there's always that, that, that thing of like, well, I don't care if they watch it, but I'm not gonna watch it with them, you know? And so I'd like to, to find that balance at least. And then the other thing was streaming just the fact that we can do 37, 38, 40 minute episodes of TV if we want to. And we can tell longer stories. We can have montages. We can have more music and stuff and do stuff that you can't do on network. So creatively, that was very exciting for me.
do you start now thinking about the next season or have you already? Yeah. I mean, uh, we don't know, you know, we don't no determinations have been made about that. So you kind of loosely think about it, but you also don't want to be like spending all your time coming up with something that isn't going to happen. You know, we, 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 this show right now, it ends in a way that could be a limited series of 10 episodes and it would be fine. And it was, we told the story of these people. There's also plenty of ways to, to continue. Um, so no, I've been spending my time actually, uh, with a, with a different idea, just, just so I have something to do and, and something I've been wanting to do for a while. So I've been working on that. And then uh, time will tell if we, if we continue the story of Sprung or not. The next series is locking up everybody that should be in jail, right? <laughs> well, I dealt with a pandemic uh, the, this time. So, next, so my, my next one, I'm going to see if I can take on death. See if so, I can make that funny. It perfect. seems like a natural progression. If they could do Hogan's Heroes, you can do that. Yeah, I think right? so. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much. Congratulations, too. It's a fun, fun show. All right. Well, thank you for your kind words also about my son. That will make him very excited. You tell him I'm fan number one. And all you have to do, I'm just telling others, is be sure you watch his stuff on his social media feeds because they are very, very funny. His law and order thing, unbelievable. Oh, fantastic. I love it. Thanks so much, Greg. All right.